Welcome to the first episode of Smash for Noobs and Cool Dudes, a beginner's guide. That name is too long and I'll probably change it. I'm G5 Cosmos for Game 5 Smash, and in this episode I'm going to help you understand the three fundamental phases of gameplay. So if you play Smash casually or you're just starting competitively, it can be easy to fall into the habit of playing with the same goals in mind all the time. You want to hit the guy, right? So you try to do that regardless of the situation. And it may seem daunting then to think of all the possible situations and needing a specific goal for each. Fortunately, we can simplify things and classify every possible situation in Smash into three main categories or phases of gameplay. These phases are neutral, advantage, and disadvantage. I'm going to go deeper into the definitions of these phases, but the simplest way to understand them is by a player's quantity of options or possible actions in the moment. In neutral, neither player has more options than the other, and in disadvantage and advantage, one player has more options than the other, and the player with more options is in advantage, while the player with fewer options is in disadvantage. On any frame of any match in Smash history, a player either has the same, more, or fewer options than the opponent, and is thus in one of these three phases or states. Okay, now let's look closer. So neutral is how every match starts. Both players are on the stage and likely on the ground. They have access to their entire moveset as well as an equal amount of space on stage to move around safely. Space and positioning are extremely important and often glossed over by guides and tutorials. Although there are a plethora of ways to achieve it, the goal in neutral is always to turn neutral into your own advantage state. This is referred to as winning neutral, and as you'd expect, this is often achieved by hitting your opponent. But there are other ways to win neutral. Pressuring your opponent, or essentially scaring them in some way, can force them into shield, into the air, or into the corner of the stage in an effort to avoid whatever threat you present. Although some might not consider this winning neutral, if you look at these three situations, your opponent definitely has fewer options than you do in each. In shield, your opponent cannot dash or walk, and only has access to out of shield options, which are grab, jump, roll, spot dodge, up smash, and up special, and letting go of shield, which has 11 frames of lag. In the air, your opponent cannot shield or perform any grounded moves, and their movement is limited. And in the corner, your opponent loses the option to move backward without going off stage, which is even more limiting. If any of these lists still sound like a lot of options to you, consider that when your opponent is in these limited positions, you have complete access to your entire moveset, and thus you are in advantage and they are in disadvantage. This brings us to the next phases. Although advantage and disadvantage are inherently polar opposites, they are two sides of the same coin and cannot exist independently of each other. You can think of it like a scale weighing both players' options. When the scale is balanced, the game is in neutral, but when one side is higher, the other side will always be lower, these being disadvantage and advantage. Advantage state is most obvious when a player is performing a combo, juggling the opponent, or on stage when the opponent is off stage, but advantage can take many forms as explained in the examples of winning neutral mentioned earlier. Once you enter advantage state, your goal is to maintain it for as long as possible and get as much reward, meaning damage or a stock, out of it as possible relative to the risk in doing so. Risk management in advantage state is important, because despite your opponent having fewer options than you do, you still must respect those options or your opponent may turn the tables. For example, Fox is in disadvantage state because he's in the air above Mario. Mario could go for an up air to extend his advantage and get more damage with a combo, but he risks getting nared by Fox, and since the Mario is at kill percent for Fox's nair to up smash combo, he can opt for a safer play by instead respecting the nair, as it is one of Fox's best options in disadvantage, and instead of going for an up air, shield the neutral air and punish with a shield grab. The Mario of course doesn't know for sure if the Fox will nair in this situation, but considering the risk reward ratio, he's safer by choosing an option that ends his advantage and resets neutral, rather than choosing an option that could continue his advantage but risk losing his stock. Although there are specific goals for different types of advantage situations, you can never go wrong by holding center stage. I'll talk more about stage control and positioning in another video. Finally, let's look at disadvantage. Your goal in disadvantage is to give your opponent the least reward possible and end their advantage state, whether the resulting state is your own advantage or just neutral. These goals are, again, relative to the risk involved. For example, an air dodge might let Fox escape Mario's combo here, but if the Mario anticipates it, he can go for a fair spike and take the stop, a far worse outcome for the Fox than if he had allowed Mario's combo to continue, resulting in some damage and bad positioning. The concept of taking hits is very important to understand. Since all defensive options are punishable, it's often better to accept whatever your opponent may have than to spam defensive options, as you may eat more damage for doing so. This is very common at lower level play, and good players will quickly notice your habits and punish accordingly, 
so it's very important to take your time and play disadvantage carefully. This may seem like a contrast to the goal of disadvantage, which is to end your opponent's advantage, but it all comes with evaluating risk and minimizing what your opponent can do to you. Understanding every specific situation can seem impossible, but it's the kind of thing that you'll slowly build as you play and study, so don't expect this to come overnight, and you'll certainly become more aware with experience. And that about wraps up this episode. I hope you learned something from this video, and let me know in the comments below what you'd like to learn in the next episode. As always, thank you for watching, and please subscribe to Game 5 Smash for more informative videos.